Okay, what we have here is our model 258. This is our model B. It has both the bouncing and the vibration analyzer modules with it. What we'll start with is the analyzer module. So we come on our home page and select which module we want. When it's highlighted, we press either one of our fire keys to open up that application. And from here, we have three options. One is to set up a fresh new job. One is to recall the settings of a previous job. And the last is to review data that you've re already recorded. We'll start with the setup. This right here allows you to set up what type of sensors you have. In this case, we have accelerometers. What the sensitivity is that we want it at. For now, we have 100. We also have the option of setting up what type of units we want to see on the y-axis. We have our acceleration Gs, acceleration in meters per second squared, inches per second, millimeters per second, vibration micrometers, and mils, along with time and ESP. We'll use mils for this one, since that's what a lot of the companies use. Also, we have the ability to set up our X units, either in Hertz or CPM. For this example, we'll use CPM. And then we have the detection type, root mean square, peak, peak to peak, true peak and true peak to peak. So we'll go ahead and pick our peak to peak. And we have the ability to set a high pass filter to filter out noise that we don't want that we don't care about we'll leave that at two hertz and our frequency range is the maximum amount that we'll look at in this case we'll put it at 3000 this instrument right here is capable of 40,000 cpm or 40,000 hertz as the maximum so we'll change this to 3000 and the resolution we can change that we have 100, 200, 400, 800, 16, 32, 64, and 12, 800. We'll leave it at 400 lines because it's still high resolution, but it doesn't take as long to get the readings. And we have the next part that will be of interest is whether we're going to, how we're going to view the signal, whether it's just spectrum, the graph itself, or if it's spectrum, and phase angle. For the spectrum, you just use one channel. For the spectrum and phase angle, you'll have to use two sensors. Your second channel sensor will be used as a reference point. So in this case, we'll leave it at spectrum and we'll start and we'll start it. doing right now is acquiring data to make our graph. If we press the 7 key, it will jump from the peak so we can see at what frequency we have something and what the vibration is. In this case, at the at our running speed of 2580, we have 2.42 mils. So that lets us know that we have some vibration that we need to take care of which is unbalanced because it's at our running speed. So we'll hit save. Save reading as. And in this case, we'll use today's date for our example. And we'll go back. And if we want to recall those settings for our next job, if we want to set the next job the same way, hit recall. And we would just go down to whatever it is the job that we want to recall, settings, in this case it will be our April 8th, and it brings up all the settings we have previously in there. And likewise, to review a job, we hit review data, and it will bring up any job on here that we've done. So what we'll do now is go to the balancing part of this. Once again, we come to our home page and move over to our balancing module. 
and hit our fire key. So what we we have the option of setting up either one plane bouncing or two planes. In this case, we'll use two planes. And we're going to once again use the A to D mill because we have accelerometers and we want to change the readings to displacement. Our units in this case, we're going to use grams and inches as our length units. We have the option of how we want to count our angles. We're going to use against rotation. This means since it's rotating towards the wall, we're going to count the angle towards us. So what we'll do now is hit options, which will allow us to set up the rest of it. For our detection, we want peak to peak. So we get a forward and back, the whole forward and back motion. Our solution is going to be influence coefficients because we're using the trial weight method. And what we'll do now is set up our planes. Uh, channel 1 is going to be plane 1. And we have our type, which is whether it's continuous, meaning we can put weight anywhere around, or if it's fixed, where we have fixed positions to put weight. So in this instance, we'll have continuous. And we'll set the second plane the same way as we set the first plane. It says we'll have channel two for our second plane. If we did have an issue where one side was continuous and the other side was fixed, we can set up each plane independent of the other. So we'll hit apply. And we're ready to start. So it's asking us if we got our accelerometers on plane one and two. We'll hit OK. So we got our readings now. Since the light has turned green, we can hit our fire button to capture the readings. And what it's going to ask us now is how much weight we're putting on it, what angle, and the radius that we're putting it at. For this, we're going to say we have one gram. And we are going to put it on our first plane, which is right here. So we'll sit, stick that at our radius. And what we're using is the tape as our zero degree marker. In actuality, since you're defining your angles, you can use anywhere, but you just have to make sure that you put it back to that angle for whatever you call it. So we'll start her up again. and we will hit the fire key. So what we want to see is a change in our mills reading, which we have, because it's going from 2 something to 10 something, which means we've had more than our 30% change. So we'll hit our fire key to capture the reading, and it's going to ask us if we want to keep the trial weight attached or no. In this instance, we're not going to keep it attached because it's easy to remove and we're going to put it on our second plane. So once again, we'll line it up with our zero point and start it up and press our fire key. So what's good now is getting it so that our readings settle. So what we have now is we had to make sure that we got a change in our mills reading on this side, which we did. Green lights on so we can hit the fire key. And once again, it's going to ask us if we want to leave our weight in. So in this case, no. And now we have our summary of what we need to do to correct it. In this instance, we need to add 0.278 grams at an 
angle of 144 degrees and a radius of one inch. The good thing about the 258 is if we decide that one inch isn't where we want to add it, we can change the radius, we'll say two inches in this case, and what it does is it compensates, as you can see it dropped our mass by half because we doubled our radius. And vice versa, if we make our radius smaller, it's going to take more mass to do that. And once we add those weights that it asked for, we start it up, take another reading, What would happen if we, once we did this, it would give us new readings. We'd hit the fire key and would ask us if we wanted to trim this. If your vibration was less than what you wanted, then you say, no, you don't want to do your trim run and be finished. Or you could do another trim run and have more weight taken off of it. And that's all there is to the 258.